Hello guys, Marco Schwartz here and welcome to this new video. In this video, I will show you that you can also use a REST Cloud to control your Raspberry Pi board from anywhere in the world. So I will show you how to control a simple LED on your Raspberry Pi and also how to access data that is stored on your Raspberry Pi all from anywhere in the world. And at the end of the video, we'll use the ARS dashboard to really use a graphical interface, so buttons and indicators to control and monitor your Raspberry Pi board from anywhere in the world. So let's start now. So let's first see what we need for this project. So you will need a Raspberry Pi, of course. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 2, but you can use a Raspberry Pi 1, you can use a Raspberry Pi 3, you can use basically any models. What you will need though is really to have some kind of internet connectivity. So here I have a Wi-Fi dongle right here that allows me to get internet, but also you can use uh, the internet port. Also, this Raspberry Pi is uh, already configured with an SD card with Raspbian on it. So the latest version of Raspbian, as well as Node.js. So in this video, I will not show you how to install that because there are many tutorials out there how to do this. So what you need is Raspbian installed as well as Node.js in the latest version for the Raspberry Pi. So now we are simply going to actually uh, configure this project. So I want to show you how to control your board via a REST. So we won't do anything complicated here. I will simply show you how to connect a simple LED to this board and we'll see how to control it uh, remotely. So here we have a breadboard and also an LED and a resistor. So I will just connect um, the resistor on my breadboard here and then I will plug the um, LED just next to it with the longest pin of the LED touching the resistor. Then I will take two tables. One will be the signal table that will go to the resistor and another one will be like a ground table coming from the LED. And now I just need to con connect this to my Raspberry Pi. So I will start with the ground here. So I will just take this black table over there and you can just basically leave two pins here and connect that to the third pin on the top row and this is the ground. For the signal, I will actually connect that to GPIO pin number 15, which is just next to the ground. So it's very easy. And here my Raspberry Pi is actually configured. So I will now show you how to actually control your Raspberry Pi from anywhere in the world using Arrest. So first we need to log in into your Raspberry Pi. So I will assume that it's connected to your local network and you can access it remotely. So I will log in via ssh pi at raspberrypi.local and if you didn't change the password, the default password is raspberry and now I'm logged in into my Raspberry Pi. So actually, I went ahead and created a folder named pi arrest test. So let me first show you something. Online, you can find on the GitHub repository, on my personal GitHub repository, you will find something called pi arrest. So that's the official GitHub um, page for this. You have a lot of explanation on, on to install it or to use it. And you have some examples as well. So let's have a look in those examples. So you can see one of those is called cloud, and that's what we want here. We want to be able to connect to the cloud. And this is basically what I will show you in a moment. This is what I used for this example and for this video. So let me show that on the Raspberry Pi itself. But just know that you can learn a lot just by uh, looking at this page, it will teach you, we you know, for example, how to install Node.js if it's not done yet, how to install PyRest, and how to quickly use it on your Raspberry Pi board. So now I will come back to my terminal, and here I have one file called, called cloud.js. 
And this file, I will now uh, have a look at what's inside. So as you can see, we use uh, the PyRest and the Express module here. We define some, sorry about that, some parameters for the Py board, and those are the ID of the board. This is what's important because it will identify your board on the cloud server. You also have uh, the name of the board, BCM means that we are using the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and not just the pin numbers. We define some uh, like dummy temperature and humidity because I want to show you in a moment how to access them uh, remotely. And finally, we connect to the cloud server and start the server locally. So this is really like the minimal application that you need to uh, connect to the cloud server. So what you need to do if you just uh, if you are just using this on your Pi is really to change this ID here and then simply to type sudo npm install and the name of those two modules so express and Pi rest and this will install all the required modules for this project. So depending on your Raspberry Pi version, it can be very slow or very fast. So if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, for example, this should be quite fast. So as you can see here, I actually installed those uh, globally before, so it's already done, it's, it went kind of fast. But of course this will depend on your Raspberry Pi. So now we can actually start the sketch with sudo node uh, cloud.js. And what this should do is, I'll show you, is immediately uh, start the server locally and also connect to the arrest.io server. So I will now actually show you how it works. So I just copied like the ID of the board and I will go uh, at cloud.arrest.io followed by the ID of the board and I will just type ID just to see if the board answers to my commands. So as you can see it answered back with the ID of the board, the name, and that it's an Raspberry Pi, and it's connected. So my board is actually connected to the cloud. So now I want to control this LED from this uh, web browser here. So for that, remember that it was connected on GPIO 14, and I will just type 1. So this should immediately turn the LED on. And as you can see, immediately the LED is turned on. I can just put a zero here, and this will immediately turn it off again. So as you can see, we can really now control our Raspberry Pi board from anywhere in the world. But let me show you something more. I will copy again this uh, ID here. Now I will go to the dashboard feature of ARest. So dashboard.arest.io follow, yeah, I will just log in there. So for now, I have my own login, so I will just sign out of here. I actually have a test login. So I have a test user here, and this is how you will see it if you just start in, if you just created a dashboard. So for that, I will call it, uh, for example, Raspberry Pi. I will create a new dashboard, and then I will open this new dashboard. And basically, what I can, and basically what I can do now is edit this, and I will create a new element. And this new element, I will simply name it LED. I will paste the ID of the device. It's a digital command with pin number five. 
and I will also uh, pin number 14, sorry, and I want on of buttons. I will click on create new element, and as you can see immediately, I can see that my device is online, it found the, the name of the device, and I can now use these two buttons to control the board. So I simply click on on, and immediately the LED comes on, off, on again, and off again. So this is really great to just control your Raspberry Pi completely from the cloud using a nice dashboard. Of course, I can do something else. I can also just go back to editing mode and now actually display the temperature in here. So remember, we have some dummy temperature on our Raspberry Pi. So I've just written that. I will click on variable, enter temperature here, because that's the name of the variable on the Raspberry Pi. I just want the test indicator here. And I will create this element. And immediately it displayed this value of 24, which is the value of the dummy variable I put on Raspberry Pi. So really quickly, I can use this to create um, nice dashboards that will allow me to monitor, but also to control my Raspberry Pi from anywhere in the world.